next we go to generators. So, here we have to look at the infinitesimal transformations. The infinitesimal transformations are, so all we have to do is look at those met, met, uh, transformation matrix, it is in the other language, yeah, this language is cosh, sinh, sinh, cosh. They have just the same kind of expansions as sine and cosine, except for the fluctuate. Oh, the most important difference between the rotations and these is aside from the fact that there are hyperbolic trigonometric functions, there is a minus sign here and a plus sign here. This sign, these signs are always opposite for real rotations. Depending on the convention used, the minus sign may be here or there but they are oppositely signed, whereas in boost these will always be the same signed. So, if it was boost in the opposite direction, then both the sign hyperbolics will change sign and you will get both minus signs. So, <coughs> in the present case, cosh psi sinh psi If you expand out the cosh, it is 1 to first order and then there will be psi times 0, 1, 1, 0. The sinh series is just the odd powers with uh, divided by the number factorial with no sign changes. They are both essentially becoming exponential for large. So, there are no signs, fluctuating signs and this is all we have and plus order psi squared, which will come for the expansion of cosh, but we look at the linear term, then this is all we have. So, in 4 D notation, we have k 1, which is same as k x. equal to, so we call it k x 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 and the 3 by 3 part which is rotations will be a big 0, but as I said as per Steven Weinberg's notation, I will fill it with zeros. Then k 2 which is same as k y would be equal to 0 0 1 and 0 and 0 1 and 0. So, the 1 just migrates along the top and the bottom and this 3 by 3 sub matrix of rotations remains null and does not require much imagination to. So, you can fill it out 0 0 0 1 and 0 1 and all other zeros. Now, just as for the rotation matrices, we would like to know the algebra of these. Okay. So, we have to see what these things do under mutual commutation algebra of boost generators k i. Now, here is where I run into lot of grief with signs and uh, I hope that you will bear with me. So, I have I have some notes actually I will put these up, but I found that the notes have sign problems. So, um, you should believe the results I tell you and <laughs> work out the matrix multiplication yourself, but 
let us since there is time and since we never have any tutorial hour, let us try to do k x k y and see what we get a k x k y and commutator. So, 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 and if you do want to save time put 0 here and then 0 1 0 0 1 0 big 0 here Now, yeah, I am trying to put k y first and times k x So, what do we get? Um, <coughs> so, the only non zero term here is the one that comes from second row and third column. So, second row and minus third row and second column. This is equal to our old friend L z. Yeah, L z had a, so this is minus of L z. This is a L z because it is in the 1 2 location. So, this is giving x y rotation basically with 1 here and a minus 1 here and our convention the way I remember we introduced the active rotations was that this is equal to minus of uh, L z. and therefore, is equal to i times j z. We had set uh, j z equal to i times l z. <coughs> j z equal to i times l z. So, l z equal to minus i times j z. So, minus l is equal to i times j z. Okay. So, we expect that k i k j to produce i times j uh, epsilon i j k j k. If I take k x and k y right this is k x and this is k y. and it produce j z. So, we expect that the algebra is k i k j equal to i epsilon i j k this. The next thing to check is what happens between j and k and this is where I had some problem with sin. So, you will see where the sign crops up in a most important way most of this that we are writing it does not really matter. But anyway, let me next try to do k x and j z. So, can you do k x and j z in your book? And better fill out everything. Whereas, j z is equal to 
i times l z and l z has one here. So, there is i and minus i. So, so next consider this all the other things are going to be 0 and minus third row into second column, which is going to be equal to minus i. Sorry, so minus i is over here. So, what do we get? We get i times k x is not it k y. So, thus we expect that k i. So, let us first write k x j z was equal to i times k y. So, what do we expect k i, but this is in reverse order. So, we should so z x would be more correct would be minus. So, better write it as j i ok very sorry. So, this is same as j z k x equal to minus i k y or j i k j equal to minus i epsilon i j k k k. Okay. So, now we have this algebra all this looks pretty boring, but now something interesting happens. <clears throat> so, summary by the way this is worked out in um, Jackson, Jackson's electrodynamics book chapter 13 has all this written out in great detail. He does not use complex notation, but I did try, try to check the sign, but there are all these binary choices. Do you use active rotations or passive rotations? Do you use active boosts or pa passive boosts? Uh, you write j first or k first. So, the signs have to be worked out, but it is all there in Jackson's book. Electrodynamics book it is there, chapter 12 I think, special relativity. <coughs> so, we are not doing something all that terribly exotic so far. But now, let us see what is the summary. Firstly, we had the good old j i j j equal to i epsilon i j k j k. Then we calculated k i k j
equal to i epsilon i j k j k and finally, we had j i k j which is equal to minus i epsilon i j k k k. This is the total S O 3 1 algebra or the Lorentz group algebra. What is interesting to note is that if you have two boosts, if you do, if you commute two successive boosts, you actually get a pure rotation. Okay. So, in atomic physics, this was discovered uh, because some factor half was not coming out correctly. It is called Larmor precession, if I am not mistaken. So, uh, Larmor physically worked out the electron orbiting the atom and then it is here and then it is there. So, there are two successive boosts, those successive boosts amount to a rotation of the electron. So, and we will have, I will tell you a little more about it quickly soon. So, two, six, two boosts commute to give a rotation, but then a rotation and a boost mix things produces a boost. Now, let us try to understand physically what this, why it is like this. So, this is the boxable result and I hope that signs in it are all correct. Um, so, let us understand and write an easier way of remembering this. So, the better notation actually is to remember that uh, the z rotation is actually x y plane rotation. The when we say that I rotate around z axis, this is a convenience of three dimensions, because actually the rotation is happening in x y plane and to say that it is around z axis, there is a unique third axis in only in three dimensions. In many dimensions, there would be many, many axes that are orthogonal to x y. So, the calling it a z rotation is actually just a luxury of 3 D. Really speaking, j z is actually j x y. Okay. So, the rotation, infinitesimal rotations are in planes. occur in planes, not really around an axis except in 3D. In fact, this is the reason I can now tell you if you have suffered with this notion all along, why is it that I have to, when I take cross product, I have to erect it perpendicular to the plane in which I take the cross product. Okay. And I have to use right hand screw rule. What happens if I use left hand screw rule? Well, they say it is matter of convention. Well, if it is convention, it can be very physical. right? So, it, there is actually no perpendicular vector sticking out of the planes, it is actually within the plane and it is, uh, it is basic, the rotation is actually a second rank tensor and not a vector. So, the correct way, of, so maybe we will come to that at some other point when we come to representations. For the time being note that actually it is not the axis of rotation. So, it is a two index object, not really one index object. So, similarly, the k x 
is basically let us call it m 0 x there is time and space. Okay. So, the k i are basically t x plane rotations. If you now think like this, then we know j remember what we used to write x y z. So, x is actually y z and y is z x is equal to i times j. So, x y would have given j z, but z is equal to x y. This is what the commutation algebra is and what does this say? It says that if there is a y z rotation, uh, okay, let us similarly write down uh, say this k i k j. Okay, so, the k 0 i k 0 j becomes equal to i times j. So, uh, let us be specific. So, make it 0 x and 0 y then from this algebra we know that this is j z, but j z is equal to x y. Now, what do we see common between these? What is happening is that if I have a y z rotation followed by z x rotation not really followed, but commutation. Then the z drops out and I am left with an x y plane rotation, x y y z becomes x z directly. If I have <coughs> 0 x and 0 y, then I the 0 drops out and I basically get an x y rotation. If I have larger number of dimensions, if I rotate 1 2 plane and 7 9 plane, and later I rotate 7 9 first and 1 2, they are going to be independent, they will all commute. Okay. So, those rotations that share one axis are equivalent to the rotation which is the two uh, the, where the shared axis drops out. So, if it is z and z, then there is no z here, 0 and 0, there is no 0 here. So, aside from sign conventions, that is what is happening. Okay. And in general, we will have, <coughs> uh, so we can also quickly check the third thing, where if I take j x and k y, I should get i times, so which is sorry, so which is same as j x is equal to y z and k y is k 0 y what do I get? I get from this j x x y is equal to minus i j z becomes equal to z is equal to minus x y. x is equal to y, yeah uh, sorry uh, this is k sorry thank you that is why I was going wrong. So, uh, it becomes k 0 z that again we see the same rule if it is y z and 0 y then y is going to drop out and I will get a 0 z rotation. So, this is basically how the algebra operates and therefore, if you go to larger dimensions then planes that are independent that do not share any axis they will just commute. <coughs> Here too, you can think of 0 x and y z. So, also check this should be equal to 0. So, y z is equal to j x, 
but according to this algebra if the two indices are because there is epsilon tensor here if these two are equal this is 0. So, this is indeed 0. So, if you have completely independent planes 0 x plane and y z plane then the commute that is the moral of this whole exercise and that is its basic geometry it captures the geometry of rotations. We can check that for S O n we can introduce Well, first let us just say m i j with i j running over 1 to n for i j plane real rotation. Then we will find What do you expect m i j m k l to be equal to what? So, I am guessing if i equals k then i will drop out and j k j l will remain. So, delta i j i k m j l <coughs> then there will be a so next if i equals l then i should put delta i l and i should be left with m j k except that because i am matching a first sign with a second sign there will be a relative minus sign similarly a relative minus sign and delta j k m i l and finally, j equal to k m i k and the overall sign I do not know ok it is plus or minus 1 that one has to check by checking one of them correctly in detail, but this is what we expect it to be. If the two infinitesimal rotations share any one axis then we get an only if the share one x axis then we get a non zero answer and if neither i equals k nor if i doesn't equal k or l and j doesn't equal k or l then we'll get zero that is this so so n algebra will be like this we worked it out you know no need to be afraid of higher number of dimensions yes ok. So, let us see first one I put as delta i k and j l in the end I should put delta j l and i k right. <coughs> So, aside from an overall sign which you can fix. So, when string theorists tell you you have to live in 10 dimensions you have to say I am prepared I can rotate in 10 dimensions. So, this is uh, uh, algebra of S O n. Now, we come back to the algebra of uh, S U uh, S O 3 1 and there are some interesting things here. So, representations of the Lorentz group for Now, when we had the 3 D rotations, we had this clever j plus j minus construction, but now we have 6 generators 
corresponding to the six parameters. So, by the way, I hope you, you know how to count. These are the uh, they have to be orthogonal. So, only the upper triangle matters. The lower triangle is minus of those that are above, and the upper triangle in four by four matrices is six. So, there are six parameters, and how do we generate their representations? So, here there was this clever trick by Herman Weil. It says the following. So, by the way, Dirac was considered a wizard by most people of his generation and, and later ones who have read his papers. Uh, and Dirac was famous for not answering anything in more than one word at a time, monosyllabic. Yes, no, maybe, or keep quiet, say nothing. So, there, if you Google uh, you, uh, interview of Paul Dirac at uh, I think it was University of Wisconsin or Minnesota, one of these northern universities. So, interview of Paul Dirac, you will find this one web page of an interview taken by a Wisconsin uh, journalist and he is an American journalist. So, he goes and says, Professor Dirac, can I interview you and all this. So, and Dirac is sitting there, yes, no, no. So, he is asking you, are you the greatest genius? He says, no. So, and it goes on. So, uh, eventually Dirac gets bored, so he just kind of gets up and starts leaving. And then uh, this man says, wait, wait, but tell me, whom do you consider clever, who, who are you scared of or something like this? Who do you think is your superior? And Dirac stops and says, while, <laughs> and leaves the room. So, that Herman while. Uh, suggested that what we should do is to define a i equal to and I hope I pull this off correctly. I feel like Harry Potter movie, you know, to try to do some magic and should work. Uh, there is an i introduced. So, and B i are of course, with the opposite sign minus i k i. So, there are two independent linear combinations introduced. And now, let us see what we get with their commutation. So, if I take a i a j, So, here what we did was there is i times k i j j 
but I have here a j k commutator. So, to reverse order of j and k, I get a minus sign on the commutator which I put here, but now the order of j i has got reversed. So, if I change order of j i in the epsilon, I get a minus sign. So, there is so, firstly it became plus i, but then a minus because the epsilon sign changed. So, I get a minus i. This is straightforward. So, I get both plus signs, which looks very good, uh, except that j i j j k i k j should also have given i times. So, these two should have added. Okay. So, I claim that this is equal to one half times i times uh, epsilon i j k times j k plus. So, if I pull out an i, then I will get a everything is here is wrong. I get a minus i I'm going to change the sign here and put this sign here. So, these signs have to be reversed. Okay, how we, we did the whole matrix multiplication, but I do not know how I got it wrong, but <clears throat> if this is minus this is plus then this will become plus this will become plus and I will have a minus sign <coughs> and the k k commutator has a minus sign. So, that will cancel this and so I get totally 1 half times i times epsilon i j k times j k pl plus i because this is this becomes now a minus epsilon i j k k k. So, it becomes this. So, equal to i times epsilon i j k a k. So, we need to fix these signs k i k j equal to minus i epsilon i j k j k. Let me just try to think if I were not to do this. Anyway, right now there is there are binary choices as I told you and if you flip some signs then some signs will change. I do know that this is all this also in some convention this is the algebra and so let me just write down the book name. This is field theory a primer. modern primer. So, if you use these conventions and then introduce these a's, then the a i satisfy exactly as if it is S u 2 algebra. More importantly a and b mutually commute. So, this we can check by just running through this algebra, because if you want to calculate a b commutator, all you have to do is replace this by a minus sign, but you can see that changing that sign does all the mischief, because this first term will remain the same, this term will change sign because of this and this, but k j will not change sign and k k will change sign. So, the relative signs of the things that were supposed to add actually become opposite and a and b then commute. And finally, we can work out b i b j. This turns out to be not surprisingly i epsilon i j k b k, because once you <coughs> here change both of these signs, then everything will remain as it is except for the overall sign here and you will get a j k minus i k k. So, the summary is that a and b uh, 
S u 2 algebras which are mutually commuting independent of each other. Right, the A's satisfy A i A j equal to i epsilon i j k a k b satisfy the same and the a b mutually commute. So, we say in group theory S O 3 1 is this is the special sign equivalence S u 2 a cross S u 2 b it boils down to some SU 2s. There is these are not genuine SU 2s, they are pseudo SU 2s because of the introduction of the I in this uh, uh, convention, but, but then nor is this a full orthogonal group which is some SO 3 1, but this trick allows us to reduce at least the representations of Lorentz group to two SU 2 groups it is just like two different spins. So, the A can take any value minus L to plus L and B can L A to plus minus L A to plus L A, L has independent quantum number going from minus L B to plus L B. So, we will see more about it next time.